John Hurt and Zip Tie Domes presents Using a Geodesic Dome for Ambisonic and Other Audio Research at MTSU. On Thursday, September 13, 2018, I was privileged to work with the assistant professor John Merchant and several of his graduate students to build the first audio sound dome for ambisonic and other audio research for the MTSU College of Media and Entertainment. Zip Tie Domes donated a 20 foot wide, 12 foot tall, 3V 5 8 shelter dome to MTSU, which was built in about two and a half hours. This dome is built with inch and a half PVC struts, six inch hubs, and heavy duty 250 pound stainless steel zip ties. This geodesic structure can easily support over 300 pounds from just one hub, so supporting the array of Newman KH120 speakers, which weigh 13 pounds each, was absolutely no problem. The graduate students installed the first speaker at the very top of the dome using a C-clamp connected to a Newman mounting bracket and pointed the speaker straight down at the listener. This location was called the Voice of God, as the speaker was directly above the listener. Eight KH120 speakers were then attached to the 10 blue struts at the top of the third tier of the dome. These eight speakers were attached with a Matthews Jr. grid T-clamp, which has a 2-inch clamp aperture. This clamp size perfectly matched the 1.900 inch outside diameter of the 1.5 inch PVC struts that made up the dome. The KH120 speakers were attached to the T-clamps with a Newman L bracket. 10 KH120 speakers were installed on mic stands near the 15 hubs that make up the top of the first tier. These speakers were also connected to the mic stands using the Newman L bracket. And four KH850 subwoofers were set directly on the floor for better low frequency coupling with the room. To arrange the speakers correctly, the students used a calculator and a tape measure to achieve the correct distance between each speaker. To accurately point the speaker towards a sweet spot in the center of the dome, they put a laser pointer on top of the speaker and positioned the speaker so that the laser would point to the center of the dome. The sound was absolutely incredible. Any type of music played through this device made you feel as if you were actually there. But the highlight was a 16-channel version of Staying Alive by the Bee Gees which was provided by Assistant Professor John Merchant. John Merchant is a Grammy-nominated music engineer and has worked with Barry Gibb and the Bee Gees since 1988, and so provided a copy of the 16-channel recording of this song. Right here. Right here. Everything is just We built the ambisonic dome for the open house for MTSU's new immersive lab area, which is dedicated to teaching virtual reality and digital signage, and it was a real hit with the MTSU faculty and students. The speakers and other equipment was top-notch. 
I did a casual interview with Mike Bevers, who is one of the sound engineers that worked on the project. So Mike, tell us a little bit more uh -huh. about uh, what you're doing here. Sure, um, I'm actually just playing with the mix a little bit. Uh -huh. um, I'm messing with the balance between like the front and the back. Um, in and so these are each tied to a speaker? Uh, actually, mm, or they're channel. kind of. So they can be. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, okay. Okay. What, basically what I'm doing here is that, uh, like on this side, I've got some Pro Tools uh -huh. oxes, uh -huh. and like each of those oxes goes to maybe a set of uh -huh. speakers. So like I've got the front left, center, uh, front right. Sure. Um, and so in Pro Tools, like I'll send the left to this ox that's front left, and so it'll actually be like all uh -huh. three of those. Uh -huh. um, so it's more like a group that's a channel? Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like a group. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh, although I do have some things that goes specifically to the certain loudspeaker, and that's Great. actually what I was going to set up. Great. Um, so you're still working on it. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is all very. There's no like, I, I with like um, with like a traditional system, uh -huh, like uh -huh. you don't need to pan to individual speakers, or right. you don't need to route to individual speakers. Right. You just like pan it in between. Uh -huh. But with this system, uh, there is there is some software out there that. Like it knows what your array is, and then you can just oh yeah, hand yeah. it around. Uh -huh. um, that can be a little finicky to work. So sometimes sure. it's just playing around and until you get it yeah. the way that you and, want. And it. Yeah, and there's not really any um, there's not really any uh, like uh, established like method for a lot of at, at this stuff. point. Yeah, yeah. it's all be, pretty new. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow, yeah. that's cool. I, I like your setup here. That's really yeah amazing. The digital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Pro Tools just running through that rack over there. Uh -huh. Not as impressive as like a real, you know, mixing board, but you actually sure, could, you couldn't sure. do this with a real board, you know, because. Uh -huh. so, so that's the amplifier right there. Uh, well, yeah, the speaker. Uh, the speaker. Sh sh show me how this works. Can you sure, just yeah. describe a little bit? Yeah, if we can, we can actually yeah. step over and sure. have a look. Um, can we walk through here? Yeah. Uh huh. So, um, boy, no, no one ever wants to see this side of things. <laughs> it's a part that makes it work, though, you know? Yeah. So, um, we've got a computer here that's got, the computer's running Pro Tools. Uh-huh. Um, it's got an HDX system. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, and so, it's talking to this, which is kind of the interface. There's a couple. Yeah. I mean, it's got HDX cards in it. So yeah. It's a Pro Tools interface, but as well as that. Rednet 4 Pre, which um, changes it changes it into Dante, um, and communicates with this blue DA, which then talks to our um, speaker distributor. Wow! Right here. Wow! Um, so it's and then the speaker distro sends it out to all the speakers, and it knows like what speaker is what, uh -huh. based on how we set it up in uh, Pro Tools. Cool. So it's um, it's actually a really fast computer and really fast. Um, uh, and so you keep up with okay. like a numbering system or something for each, yeah, each speaker? Yeah, we did. So like it starts with, like that's number one, uh -huh. and then it goes uh, clockwise all, all around, way around the bottom. Uh -huh. And then it starts with, that one I think is 11, it uh -huh. goes clockwise, and the voice of God is, uh, I think, 19 or 20. And then the four subs come last. Yes. So like 24 outputs. Wow. Yeah. It's a little, uh, yeah, it's, it's a... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, since there was very short notice for where to put the Ambisonic Dome, we did not have a permanent place for locating the dome. So the speakers were removed and the dome was taken down later that day. But John Merchant said that just having the dome there that day did more than all the papers he could have written requesting a geodesic dome for ambisonic and the other forms of audio research. And while the dome was up, we found that we had only scratched the surface of what this audio dome could do. We just did not have the time to completely capture A format ambisonic audio and then output the ambisonic B format through the speakers to create an accurate ambisonic sound field. Imagine how much better it could be if we had spent a month perfecting the speaker array and the sound engineering. But I am absolutely certain that this will happen. 
So even though we had to take the dome back down, I know that MTSU will find a permanent indoor location for their new audio dome because this dome will give MTSU the ability to teach a hands-on course in ambisonic and the other types of audio technology. MTSU is a very modern school with excellent teachers and is just 30 miles away from the music industry and entertainment mecca of Nashville, Tennessee. The tuition is reasonable and MTSU is in a very beautiful and safe location for academic study. But the best part about MTSU is that they have talented faculty such as the assistant professor John Merchant who was nominated for a Grammy in music engineering. John Merchant has worked with Barry Gibb in the Bee Gees since 1998, Barbara Streisand, Annie Lennox, and many other stars in the music industry. If you want to know more about John Merchant, go to www.johnmerchant.com and you will be amazed at his qualifications. So, if you really want to be the best, you have to learn from the best. And MTSU, with the connection it has to the Nashville recording and entertainment industry, this is where you will find some of the most talented teachers. So check out MTSU at www.mtsu.com. Thanks.